This is our chapter one, lesson three lesson on analyzing quantitative data with numbers. And we want to focus on what measures of center and spread we can use and when is it used to each, when is it best to use each and why. So first let's talk about mean or the average. Uh, we add up all the observations, divide by the number of observations. And we use this symbol, X bar, to uh, indicate the sample mean, meaning from our sample data set. The true population mean, meaning if we had all the data in the entire population, would be mu, this right here. It looks kind of like a U. Um, so oftentimes we're using a sample mean as an estimate of the true population mean. Um, we use this as a measure of center with uniform, symmetrical, and roughly symmetrical distributions, but not if there's any skewness due to any outliers and how they could affect the mean. Uh, so outliers on the high side will bring the mean way up, on the low side they'll bring it way down. So in the presence of skewness, we will go with the median, since outliers don't affect the median. Uh, the quantity, like how large or how small an outlier is, doesn't affect the median since it's just another data point, and the median is the midpoint or the middle data point of the distribution, with half of the data being larger than it and half of it being smaller. So you uh, order from least to greatest, uh, if your number of observations is odd, then the median is the center observation. If it's even, then the median is the average of the two center observations. You're going to use this as a measure of center whenever there's any skewness present in the graph. So if we had a perfectly symmetric distribution, mean and median would be equal. Um, if we have a skewed right distribution, that means the mean's being pulled to the right or larger than the median. Uh, if we have a skewed left distribution, the mean's being pulled to the left or smaller than the median. So the mean is usually further out in the long tail uh, than the median is, generally. So a good example of this is uh, if we look at salaries for Major League Baseball players, in 2009 the minimum salary was $400,000, with most players earning close to that value. But superstars would earn far more than that. So that created a right-skewed distribution, meaning there's some players that are earning far more. Um, so that meant that the mean was over 3.24 million, but the median was 1.15 million. So the mean would give us a, a skewed interpretation of where the true middle is because it's pulled up by the people making 15, 20 million in a year. While the median gives us a better example of where the middle is of our distribution and really where more data is around 1 million, just slightly over 1 million. So it provides a better example of what a typical player would have earned in 2009. So the other measure of um, our distribution that's thrown off by skewness um, would be, and outliers, would be the range. If we have an outlier that's much higher or much lower, then that's going to affect our range, making our range look like it's much bigger than it really is. Meaning it seems like we have a large range of data if we have one outlier that's much bigger than everything. But in reality, we don't have that big of a range. We just have one outlier that's screwing everything up. So to account for that, we can use the interquartile range, which is uh, it's, it's like using the median. So we, we divide all the data in two, and then we look at the first half of the data, and we find the median point of that first half, meaning we find we, dr we chop it up into quarters. So it's like having, uh, we have the first quarter, the median, and the third quarter, and that shows us where our data is within those quarters. So an example here is that the mean annual temperature in San Francisco is 57 degrees, which is the same as Springfield, Missouri. However, in San Francisco, we don't get really hot weather or really cold weather, and Springfield, Missouri has a much bigger range they get very hot and very cold weather. So Springfield could be much warmer in the summer, much cooler in the winter. A five number summary, which would be the minimum, then the first quartile, which is the median of the first half of data, then our median, which has half the number smaller, half bigger, then the third quartile, which is the median of our large half of data, and then the maximum is our five number summary. So if we were to do it by hand, we would first locate our median, and then we would look to the left of that and find the median of that half of data. And then we would look at, to the right of the median of the entire data set and find the median of that half, basically chopping everything up into quarters. So find the median first, then look at the left half of the data set and find the media there, median there. Then look at the right half of the data set and find the median there. And that will chop us up into quarters or quartiles. So our interquartile range would be the third quartile meaning the median of the large half of the data set, minus our first quartile, the median of the small half of the data set. Outliers will stri be strictly defined as points that fall 
more than one and a half times this value, meaning we, we subtract Q1 from Q3, um, above or below the third quartile. So if we took the data at Q3 and we added one and a half times the interquartile range and the number was bigger than that, it'd be an outlier. If we have Q1, meaning the median of the first half of our data, the smaller half, and we subtracted one and a half times that IQR and then and our value is less than that, then it'd be an outlier on the low side. So now we have a strict definition for outliers. So now we're, now we're not saying, oh, that could be, or that's a possible outlier. We're strictly defining what an outlier is based on this middle half of our data. And notice that this is helpful because Q3 and Q1, they won't involve the outliers. Outliers would be up towards the maximum or the minimum, depending on where they're an outlier. So this is a way of defining outliers where they don't play a part in the definition, so they're not skewing our objective interpretation of the, of the values. So a five number summary will bring these ideas all together, with the first number being the minimum or the smallest value that's not an outlier, uh, our second value being quartile one, our third value being the median, the fourth value being the third quartile, and the fifth value being the maximum. It's a quick numerical summary that will give us a lot of information about potential skew, um, as well as large values, small values, and potential outliers. We can represent this with what we call a box plot, meaning we would have the minimum here, um, we'd have quartile one here in the box, quartile three here, and the median here. So we have our minimum, we have Q1 right here, we have the median, Q3, and the maximum. So this means one quarter of my data is located here. One quarter of my data is located between Q1 and the median. One quarter of my data is between median and Q3. And one quarter of my data is between Q3 and the maximum. So um, this five number summary corresponds to a box plot, which is what we call this graph here. So in order to make that box plot, you would figure out the quartiles. Uh, you'd have a central box from Q1 to Q3 with a vertical line in the, um, somewhere in it marking the median. If there is no vertical line there, it's because the median equals Q1 or Q3. Uh, and that'll happen at times where we have um, a mode, that have a data point that, re that repeats several times. So if there's no box, if you're looking for a line in there but there's no line, it's because the median is either equal to Q1 or Q3. Um, the lines are called whiskers that mark the smallest and largest observations that are not outliers. Outliers we could mark smaller or greater than the whiskers using an X or there's other asterisks or other things like that. Uh, check page 61 in your book so you can learn how to go over how to make one on the calculator. Um, this is also in the calculator functions on Schoology in the link. So if you check our Schoology page, um, making a calculator box plot like the shorthand short directions are there. Finally, another measure of spread that we'll be using a lot throughout the year is standard deviation, meaning on average how far are all the data points from the mean. So we can use this, do this using our calculator, or we would find the mean and then take, uh, subtracting each observation from the mean, squaring those, adding them up, dividing by uh, the number of observations minus one, and then taking the square root of that. So we do all of those things in order to figure out um, on average how much further something is above or below the mean and we have to take the square and the square root to account for the fact that things could be um, larger or smaller and we just want to know the distance so we're mo more interested in the absolute value not whether things are less or bigger because otherwise we would end up with a standard deviation of zero every time since the mean is in the middle of our data set so here's what the formula looks like so the formula here will give us that. The, um, before we take the square root, we call this the variance, how much something varies from the mean. So this, this is the summation symbol. So we subtract each individual observation from the mean, square those and add them up, divide by n minus 1. So it's similar to the mean, but we don't divide by the number of observations. We divide by one less. Um, and that's involved with the fact that it's an estimate. Um, and then we take the square root of all that to find the standard deviation, or the average distance of each data point from the mean. So since it tells us the average distance from the mean, that gives us a measure of spread and how spread out the data is. You only want to use the mean and standard deviation for reasonably symmetric distributions. If you have a skewed left or skewed right distribution, um, or a distribution with strong outliers, you want to use median and IQR, because they don't, the outliers aren't accounted for in the spread. 
They're a more objective way to do it. Um, outliers might be due to a number of reasons. So median and IQ are when they're skewed because they're more objective. Mean and standard deviation give us a good sense when they're reasonably symmetric. Here's your multiple choice question. What would be the best way to describe the spread of the distribution below? So take a look at this distribution. Right now think about socks, shape, outlier, center, spread. Think about based on those aspects whether you, uh, what you'd want to use in order to describe this distribution. Also look over the summaries, the summary of chapter one, lesson three in your book and any examples there and instructions for putting together calculator functions uh, on Schoology and in your book. And then answer the conceptual question below.